Hey guys, welcome back to SimTech channel. So I'm faced between a selection of uh, Tip 41C BJT and the FQPF MOSFET. Now this is for an application. I just want to do a quick DIY on my desk to basically control the LED light on my desk. But I'm not sure which one is a better option for me. So hence I'm doing this tutorial to maybe uh, find out. Obviously, this is going to be PWM control. So which one of these two is better for PWM drive? A BJT or a MOSFET? So stay tuned until the end of this tutorial to find out. Switching speed, the first parameter that we are interested in making the comparison. The second parameter is the power dissipation. After the power dissipation, we also want to know which one is better at driving and that basically the ease of driving parameter so we want to know which one of these will satisfy these three conditions so stay tuned now if you find this tutorial useful please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel now what do we have here we've got a bjt tip 41c a bipolar junction transistor which is a current control device so it's need a current on the base to control the current on the collector so what it means is you have to have a continuous current flowing into the base so that you can control what's going on at the collector emitter junction so that's a bjt on the other hand we've got a mosfet which is a metal oxide semiconductor fit effect transistor which is a voltage control device so you only need a voltage at the gate in order to control the MOSFET. Now, how much should this voltage be? The gate voltage must just be above the V threshold. Okay, V threshold is specified in the data sheet. You have to look it up. Okay, so you just have to be higher than V threshold. Then your MOSFET is going to start conducting. Obviously, there is a recommended voltage in which you have to operate your MOSFET because that will specify the RDS on value for that MOSFET and that will determine the power dissipation. I've got a tutorial in the description box where I run into a couple of MOSFET and start finding out which one has a better RDS on when it's fully turned on. Please check that tutorial out if you want to know more about MOSFET. Great. On the breadboard, we've got a simple biasing circuit here. So we've got a 1 kilo ohm resistor that is connected at the gate or the base of either the MOSFET or the BJT just to give some impedance uh, for our input. Then we've got the collector or drain uh, resistance to just limit a bit of current. Then where are we measuring? So this is our circuit. We've got a PWM signal that will be applied at the gate. That's a 1K resistor. Then we've got the 82 ohm resistor that will just limit the current that will flow here. So now we have this PWM signal coming out of the magic box. And we've got the plus V and negative V, basically source, where we've connected it between the collector here and the emitter. For the MOSFET, we are probing between the drain and the source to find the switching pattern, basically to determine VDS. And we're also measuring between the gate there and the source to basically measure vgs that will be the pwm signal and for the collector it will basically be at the same point but it will be the base the collector and the emitter the input signal is coming out of this box here okay so this is a ground and this is a source where my pwm signal is coming from i can control the signal here i can increase the pwm frequency and control the amplitude of the signal but we choose to leave everything fixed because we just want to see what's going on here. Great. Now we come to the main events here. So which device is faster between the BJT and the MOSFET? Now, at first glance, you might think that the Tip 41C BJT wins because it doesn't have a gate capacitance to charge like the MOSFET does. But hold on the bjt suffer from something called 
charge storage delay when turning off they basically need to clear out the charge in the base when turning off right now causing a slower switching speed at high frequencies so if they do not clear that charge they're basically not going to switch off now let's confirm this with the oscilloscope testing you can see clearly here the yellow channel one that is the input signal that's what we are measuring at this point here okay now i can move this here it doesn't matter just after the resistor or we can move these after the resistor to measure right at the gate it doesn't matter okay then we are measuring it between the drain between the gate and the source the output signal we're measuring between the drain so that is channel two and the source now what you're seeing here is just the effect of the mosfet get charge okay but it doesn't affect the switching speed depending obviously it will depend on uh, how fast you are switching there is a little bit of a knot here now this is where the gate uh, voltage stop rising so if i may just zoom in there you can see here the gate voltage basically it start rising and then at this point here it stops until the mosfet basically turn on and after it's turned on then it continue to rise obviously this is the point where we're getting closer to the threshold something like that but this is the miller plateau so that's a subject for another tutorial okay now what you're seeing here i want you to pay attention at the negative width the negative width here is uh 58.7 microsecond so that's the time in which the mosfet is on because here the pwm signal rises high the mosfet switches on when it drops the mosfet switches off then the the drain is basically pulled high to that 82 which is a very soft pull up we've got there and we just measure a signal goes high goes low goes high goes low signaling how it is being switched so now 58.3 microsecond is the negative width the time in which the mosfet is on at this signal of 8.1 kilohertz now i want you to keep that in mind and we're going to now switch off this circuit okay we're going to switch off this circuit and we're going to replace the MOSFET with the BJT. So let's put the BJT in the circuit and switch on the circuit again. Now when we switch on the circuit, we need to do some adjustment here. Okay, now I'm not going to talk much here because we can already see that the square wave on the output is the same we basically switching but look at the negative wave it's much longer it's now 66 point basically 66 microseconds so we are almost about six six uh, it was 58 66 almost nine to eight microsecond longer right so this is at eight kilohertz so which means the bjt is slowing it's slowing a bit to turn off because right now you can see it's it's turned on when the most fat when the pwm signal goes lower the bjt is supposed to instantly uh, turn off but there is a delay and that's what is causing this negative width here to be much longer so this tells you that the MOSFET is turning off much faster. So the switching speed is good compared to the BJT. But this is still very close. But the higher we go on the switching frequency here, the longer you're going to see these, uh, the, the, these delay get. So which means the verdict here is the MOSFET wins in terms of the switching speed. Now, the second point uh, of our 
checking here is to see which one of these two runs hotter. Obviously, the verdict is much clear here that the MOSFET run cooler. Please watch my tutorial on MOSFET RDS on where we went through a few type of MOSFET and we measure the RDS on because the RDS on that's what de de determine how hot the MOSFET will run when it's fully switched on. That usually drop to a couple of milli ohm, very, very low RDS on that will determine the power dissipation. But that applies to this particular MOSFET. But the BJT here is depending on the saturation voltage between the collector and the emitter, VCE. V saturation. Now that V saturations, obviously, it's not going to change for a particular BJT. You can pump a uh, two amps of current. That V saturation is going to remain at constant value that is set in the data sheet, and that will determine how much power it will be burning across your BJT. So for most uh, uh, MOSFET semiconductors, BJT. For most BJT, that value is between 0.2 volt to 1 volt, much higher, at least by 50%, than what power you will get with RDS on of a typical MOSFET. So in this case, the MOSFET here is a winner. But again, this is application dependent. You might have an application that really you don't need all of these uh, 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 stories, you, you can just hook things up and it should work just fine. But when you're starting to get down into the nitty gritty of things, you have to pay attention to these parameters. Okay, now the last point here, the ease of driving. Now the ease of driving here, look at what's going, I'm going to show you quickly here. Now, when you look at this signal here, we have a means voltage of 400 millivolt coming out of the PWM signal. So that's the PWM signal's means voltage, okay? So the means is 412 millivolt. The peak or the max is 720 millivolt of the PWM signal. This is on a BJT. Now I'm going to switch this thing off. We're going to replace it back with the MOSFET. We turn the circuit on. Now we need to scale this again. Now, what are you seeing? We're seeing that the maximum voltage is 19.2 volt, while the means is 6.2. So this basically means in the case of a BJT, the base current is insufficient, okay? So the BJT won't saturate properly and the voltage drop across a collector emitter, VCE, will increase. This causes the PWM amplitude to drop because the BJT isn't fully turning on. But with the MOSFET, we're not loading it because we're not drawing any current. We just need that voltage magnitude to exceed the threshold and then we turn it on. So again the mosfet wins because it's not loading your pwm circuitry unlike the bjt that need a continuous current the mosfet only need that initial charge voltage once again here the mosfet is the winner okay you might find an application where the bjt is just fine okay it doesn't have to beat the mosfet for this uh, for, for these points here. So this is basically uh, how you can compare these two semiconductor, but they are both good. So now I'm faced with a decision here. If my application that I want to use it on my desk here, if it's very critical, I have to use a MOSFET. But if it's something very simple, just a normal PWM, I might stick with uh, a BJT, especially if uh, I, I I'm not worried about loading the, 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 the PWM source. But now I'm a bit concerned here if I'm going to uh, use the PWM source as an Arduino uh, device or any other controller, I don't want to be loading that pin using a BJT. That's where the problem is going to be. But I can drive the MOSFET directly without loading that particular pin. So 
this is something i need to think about so that is it guys for this tutorial i hope you find it useful and if so make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel until next time cheers